I am Noelle Rollins. Welcome to the Peaceful Palette Art Lesson Series. Today we'll be using this colored pencil set to draw a realistic nose. So I have taped my reference photo here and I'm going to use a pencil to sketch out just something pretty close. I invite you to grab your paper, pencils, and sketch along with me here. I have um, ducks and chickens outside my window here and they are loving this beautiful day. So they're splashing in the water. So you may hear some quacking or fun in the background. So I'm using very light pressure to just get this sketch generally about the same. Our focus mainly is how to use the colored pencils but it's important to see also just the whole process in real time. At any point during this video, you can go ahead and pause if you need to catch up. There's a few ways you can use this video. One is to simply watch and just see, take it all in. Another is to get this colored pencil set and mineral spirits and those are listed in the description so you can see where to get them and then do this video in real time with me another is to simply do the best you can with what you have you could use regular colored pencils you can use pencils and just sketch along whichever works for you i'm just correcting here a little as i go so during this video lesson, I will do the entire lesson in real time, showing you step-by-step step which colored pencil I use. Like this one is 094, hibiscus pink, and how much pressure I use on each pencil stroke so you can have the best chance of following along and recreating this. And I encourage you to if you're new to colored pencils, experiment and try the way I'm saying, and then see if that works for you. A lot of times what I have found is I will try what other people say works for them, and then I can kind of tweak it to work for myself better. Our eyes all notice different things in different orders. I'm left-handed, so I do things a little different sometimes. So basically, I'm just going through here and adding a layer to pretty much the entire nose with this hibiscus pink. I'm using light pressure, just enough to make sure that we get a base layer of this color on the paper. So I'll do my best to remember to put a little square here as I use each one. So here we have number 542. There are some yellow tones to this no, so I'm using this butternut color to really fill in more of those yellow reflections. So I chose this nose because it shows the real 
skin tones that a lot of people have where there's little bits of reds and yellows and beiges and browns and age marks and freckles and just more realistic to show how to approach something like this rather than the perfectly make um, nose with makeup on it that most of us instinctively would have a better idea how to do. Here I'm coming with the darkest blue, number 649. We're going to go ahead and just fill in the nostril here. I'm not using the hardest pressure, but I am using medium to firm pressure. And I'm only filling in the darkest parts of that nostril. And blue may seem like a strange choice, but we're going to come in and layer some other colors on it as well. Starting with this one, number 575. Which is Carmine Lake. Dark brown. So I'm just using small circular strokes for the most part. I go ahead and make a hard line on the top part of that nostril and then I blend it out a little bit lighter towards the edges here. And again, I'm adding in that contrast just to help give me a darkest part of my art so I can start to fill in all the other colors and do so in a way where that saturation really covers the lightest to the darkest parts of the nose pretty evenly. Now with that said, when we're doing the nose on its own, the darkest part of the nose here may not be the darkest part of the face. So when you're combining the features into an actual portrait, very rarely is the darkest parts on the nose going to compete with the pupils of the eyes or shading around other parts of the, you know, the face or jawline, things like that. So we're not going to use a solid black or anything here to really fill this in completely, but you'll still get the idea. And then with medium light pressure, I'm just slowly blending out into the other shaded parts. So here we're using 044. Which is the terracotta color. I'm going to use this to capture a little bit of those shadows under the nostril there. And then some of the golden browns and orangey browns within the nose. So I start off layering here, showing the different freckles, mole type patches, sunspots, um, any sort of skin variances, I'm going to go ahead and try to show. And then we'll kind of neutralize those a little bit further on in the drawing. So I'm using, for the most part, small circular strokes here. You can tell when I'm doing a freckle or a sunspot, I'm using a little bit more pressure. Any blotchiness or anything like that that most of us have on our faces, 
We'll just go ahead and capture it. And as I've said in my other videos, and I'll just say it again here, drawing is a lot of balancing out your end result that you want to have and the amount of time you have to put into working on your art. So for a nose like this, we're going to do the best we can in about a 30 minute time period, getting it as accurate as we can while still knowing that we do not have several hours to go through and get every pore exactly as it would be. But if you have the time and the patience and you want to do that, more power to you. In this video, I really felt like 30 minutes is about what we should spend on really capturing this nose here. So when I'm doing the nose here, I am really lots of circular strokes, trying to acknowledge that diamond shaped highlight that features more of a light pink lilac color at the tip of her nose. And also some of the sunspots and things on her nose. So I'm coming back in here with the dark brown. Now don't worry, at some point, oh, now we have purple. Let's see, I'm gonna look in my box here and tell you exactly which one that was. 115. some point, yes, here we go. <laughs> like I have been forgetting to put the squares there. So go back and put them in the order that I used them in. We did the blue in the nostril and then we went and did the brown in the nostril. Then we came in with terracotta. And now we're using this purple color. So the purple will help bring out that kind of implies the thinner skin of the nose where the blood flow is, can show underneath a little bit of any rosacea or redness. If someone had been in the sun that day, that sort of feel. I really like this purple color too for just adding a layer in to natural lip colors. So at any point, if you need to, go ahead and pause the video if you need to catch up. Otherwise, just keep plugging away here and do just the best you can. It's all practice. It's all learning. There's no stress. especially in doing small features like this, if drawing portraits is something you are kind of feeling pulled towards, working on some of the features ahead of time like this really just helps everything from how you hold your pencils, how much pressure to put. Here I'm just going in and erasing that pencil line from my initial drawing. And you start to find what works best for you. But the only way to do that is to really experiment and practice and you'll start to kind of lean towards ways that work with your brain, how you think, how you recognize things, which is wonderful. It makes things even more uniquely have your artistic fingerprint on them. For centuries, there have been artists who taught 
their students and had exact brushstroke by brushstroke how to recreate the masterpieces. And while there's a place for that, my hope with these classes is a little different. I don't want to make you into another Noelle. I think what is even better is when you can learn the skills and how to use art to bring balance into your life and express creativity. And then it gives you a voice to really show your world. Art is so powerful and can be used to capture the image of people, feelings, emotions. It can be used to make political statements. It can be used to show genuine feelings and capture moments in time. There's such a power to art. And it's all about just learning how to take what's in your head or what you're feeling and have a few different tools in your tool belt to be able to put that on paper. And the Peaceful Palette lesson series came about, I wanted to create a place where all people felt welcome, that they knew they could come any level that they're at, any age, and be welcomed from any background and they have a safe place here to create and also receive support from others. So here we have a bright red number 580. Sometimes the color the color names are a little hard to pronounce like this one is Carmen Anthroquinon. And so rather than struggle over that every time, I will just try to say the closest thing I can, like bright red. So here I'm going in and showing some of the broken blood vessels, some of where the sunshine has just really rosied up her nose. And then we will go in and minimize this a little bit as we blend everything together. But we really want that base. Just showing where that red reflects off the edge of the nose. And overall, I'm just trying to make sure to keep that diamond shaped at the tip of the nose. And generally capture the overall areas where there's deeper colors. a little bit more time I would go in here and really measure out and make sure these marks I'm putting are in the exact right places but within the 30 minutes I am eyeing it and just putting it as close as I can knowing that the overall feel is what I want you to take in and work on and practice for yourself it can get so easy to get overwhelmed or frustrated if you're held up on the drawing part of every colored pencil portrait you want to practice. And I love, and I'm still working on building up my own drawing skills, but in some ways it's a separate set of skills than doing the colored pencils like this. So that's why like in the past I have a video showing you how to use a light table or the grid method, things to help you in achieving setting up a drawing for colored pencils. Here we have a bright yellow, number 523. From way back in the day, artists centuries ago using the camera obscura or different tools that they had of their time. There's no shame in using whatever tools you need to in your own art.
with that said, if your goal is to really build up your drawing skills, then you wouldn't want to use those tools. You'd want to really focus on learning proper proportions, how to recognize the different shapes within a face, and really dive into those. But if you're doing a portrait for a grandchild or a grandparent, here's more of the peachy skin color 063. I'm just gonna look at my palette here and make sure that's the right number. 068. If you're going to do a portrait as a gift, the last thing I would ever want is for you to get hung up on thinking you need to spend years practicing your drawing or you're not good enough. You start wherever you need to start to be able to create that art. And don't ever let someone make you feel bad about whatever way that is. So I'm coming in with medium pressure here and I'm using this kind of beigey peach color to really blend some of these varying colors out. Almost not quite as hard of pressure as in past videos when you've seen me burnishing colors. But midway here, we're going to use a layer of mineral spirits and break these colors down. And then I'm gonna come in and do a few more light layers to add back in some of that detail. So here we have 212, kind of a grass green color. There's just a few little areas I wanted to add this color in to really kind of quiet down the red, to deepen it, play up the shadows within the readiness. Since green is the opposite color on the color wheel, we can use it to really kind of counteract the reds and add a little depth. So here we have an orange, number 533. I have the palette listed in the description that we're using today. It's the Coran Dash set of 20 luminance portrait colors. About five years ago, I decided I wanted to try colored pencils and I just had this feeling that I was going to love them. And I had mostly been working in acrylics, a few pencil portraits, but mostly acrylics for years. And so it was such a treat to invest in this 100 or 120 piece colored pencil set that I bought of the Cran Dash Luminance pencils. And that is what I, for the most part, use to create all of my portraits. I've worked in a few other like Prismacolor and different brands over the years since then. but it's the same quality and the same colored pencils that we're using here. Just a more strategic top 20 picked out. It's such a great way to be able to dive in and really play without having to do quite the financial investment of 100 or more pencils. This orange here is really helping me play up the nose here, the Irish wonderful orangey undertones, kind of that freckle and sunspots. All right, so this is more of a medium brown, number 745. Warm earth 
40%. So, so far we've been using pretty bold colors. This is helping come in and just neutralize a lot of that back, kind of warm it all up a little bit, calm it all down where we can still see the different textures and colors on the skin. But we're getting a little bit less variance then. So at this point, I know that I'm gonna be using the rubbing alcohol, so I'm doing a little bit more pressure in certain spots. For the most part though, you can almost finish it here if you needed to and just come in and burnish it. So I didn't see exactly what that was, but I believe it was 094, more of a lilac color. So again, using this to just really Capture some of the red tones, that plummy red, but also blend together. And again, you can pause at any point if you need, if I'm going too fast. We don't want to get caught in overthinking, so I kind of keep it moving here. All right, so we have bright white. Let me just check again that number 581. It's actually called pink white. And here I am using firm pressure, and I'm really filling in those spaces where there's highlights and reflections. right there at the edge of that nostril and a little underneath. So I didn't show the white there, but so far we've used 14 out of the 20 colors. I'm using pretty decent pressure here. Really blending those colors together a little bit. So here I'm coming in with a paintbrush and you could also use a cotton swab if that's what you have and some odorless mineral spirits. And I'm just going to use my brush and really just blend these together, being really careful to stay on the colored part and not get into the blank white paper. If you do like I did where you just got a clear line with your paintbrush, just kind of shimmy it out again. And so what that did was it dissolved a lot of the waxes and binders in the colored pencil and really allows this deeper, more saturated color. So coming back in again with that number 580. And I have a very fine tip on it and I'm just gonna lightly circle and recreate some of those broken blood, blood vessels. A little bit of the red there in the nose. I'm not pushing too hard. Just using the light to really build up that pinkish tone again. There's something about using the red 
strategically to get that pink tone that just hits different than using pink. You don't want to go too much or it'll start to look really off, but kind of a little bit of the details can be shown. And so if you were using rubbing alcohol instead of mineral spirits, you're going to want to wait until your paper is dry again. If you are using mineral spirits, this is number 115 I'm doing here. If you're using mineral spirits, I did, did not let the paper dry here. So I'm going in and that mineral spirits are reacting with my colored pencils to really just allow, it's almost like they melt them on contact just a little bit. And it allows it to go on in just such a beautiful, bold way. So I'm taking advantage of that and adding some of these purple tones here throughout. Small little circles here. Just constantly looking back at the reference photo, then looking at the drawing, back and forth my eyes are continuously going, trying to notice any patterns, marks, anything that I may have overlooked. Here we're back with the white. Help really make sure those highlights are showed enough. I'm using pretty firm pressure here. So here we come back in with that beige peach color, number 068. And again, I'm kind of using this to really bring that beige color back in. I notice a little spot here where it just needs a little brightening up. I'm using pretty decent pressure. Again, pause if you need to. So number 575, our deepest brown, Carmine Lake. Just coming back in here, 
I'm gonna make sure that we have the deep colors like we need again. We didn't wash them out with the mineral spirits. I always love having a nice movie on in the background when I'm drawing. Sometimes if I know it's gonna be a while, I'll pick a long one like the five hour BBC version of Pride and Prejudice or Jane Eyre, something fun like that, that it's, I don't really have to see because I've seen it so many times. Or it's always nice to have music playing. Just kind of allow yourself to drift off into another place. Both relaxing and rejuvenating somehow. So all these little finishing touches just Kind of going back through and just doing a once over again and noticing anywhere that just needs a little extra detail added back or anywhere that just feels like we may have laid it on too thick and we need to neutralize it back a little bit. So just like that coming back in with this beige color and just sort of neutralizing just a little bit rubbing that right into those deepest browns some of this simply is just having 20 pencil colors to work with and you use them in different layers and combinations some of it is just human correction and noticing and then realigning things like that All of it is very normal and just part of the process. So I'm just looking back, comparing the two, seeing anything else, breaking up that darker areas a little bit more. Here I decided to just come back a little bit more and just really color correct a few things here, neutralize them. Sometimes you may feel like you have the spots or the different marks exact and then you pull back and you realize, oh, there's an overall pattern that I was looking so detailed I didn't notice the overall patterns that appear that aren't quite accurate. So then this is where when you pull back and do another look where you can say, oh, let me change that a little bit. I'm just using small circular strokes. Here I decided to work out that really bold brown line and break that up a little bit with some white. Help change the way that looks a little bit. Here I'm just adding a little bit of showing some of the pores and the way the light's reflecting off of them. So these are all just final little details. You can look and see any other that you notice. 
So just one more angle here and then I thought, oh, I see a little bit more I could add in. So really lightly with the red here, I'm gonna come back in one more time and re-add a little bit of those vessels that can you can see on the skin, a little bit of brightness from being in the sun. It's very lightly making sure that the different areas overall just have the feel. I noticed a little bit here where from above the nostril up and to the right towards the bridge of the nose, there's a slight feeling of a band of color that goes through there that wasn't being captured. Darkening up that nostril a little bit. I'm using a mixture of straight strokes, circular strokes. It was lighter pressure there at the end. And now again, circular strokes. Very light pressure. Just any final little, final little details that I noticed. So after this lesson, our next lesson will be back on doing line drawings and we're gonna work on mouths. So I have several lessons in that mouth series, everything from line drawings to shading, learning how to shade and draw a mouth, showing teeth. I think teeth are always a tricky thing to learn how to draw. And then we'll have how to do a mouth with basic colored pencils, a 12 pack of Crayola colored pencils. And then one similar to this, we're an advanced colored pencil mouth video lesson. Here I'm coming in with that buttery yellow and just really making sure I have all the yellow tones captured. And just kind of rounding out like the bridge of the nose, down the sides of the nose. Using a little more pressure where I need to. Lots of little circular strokes that just mimic the different pores, kind of trick the viewer's eye. I would love if you'd give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and if you've gotten something out of it. Hopefully you've subscribed already so that you can be a part of future lessons. We're gonna work through each feature of the face including hair and ears, different skin tones. And then once in a while, I post a video of a portrait that I've worked on and try to show the time-lapse version of it or you can go back and watch those videos. They're always fun to see. I always think it's fun to watch a portrait be completed in just a few minutes. I have them all the way going back to painting styles up through colored pencil, charcoal, things like that. So we're just about done here. Just putting these final little touches on, really trying to just be picky and Make sure it really matches as close as we can here with the limited time that we have. If you have any questions at all about this video, how to use these colored pencils or drawing in general, I would love if you'd ask me in the comments. I'll make sure to answer. And always feel free to share any of these lessons with friends. So there we have it. There's a close up of the finished nose. I hope you had a really wonderful time today and were able to tap into your creative self. I thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.
บาย